Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video for all of you that have an external GPS and compass unit mounted on something like a multi-rotor on an iNav model that isn't flat, i.e. in the same plane as, a, as the flight controller. Now this is quite common on lots of multi-rotors these days. I looked at the Recon 7 recently that got shipped with Betaflight but also has an iNav version that you can flash on it as well. And because of the external compass, iNav can do some pretty incredible things. It can do things like mission flying, where you can load and load waypoints into it, and it can fly autonomously. And it can also do things like position hold, and also the return to home will work even in high winds. So it's a very handy thing to have. Now in iNav normally, it's expecting the compass unit that's part of the external GPS to be flat in the same plane as the flight controller. And all of the defaults are in iNav based on that assumption. You can actually set up uh, the compass and tell iNav that it's actually on this slight angle, which to be honest can be handy because when you're flying the multi-rotor around, the GPS is pointing at the sky, but it's not obvious. And to be honest with you, I've been kind of playing with this for three weeks to get to the bottom of it and actually set up this test rig here. Now, this little test rig is one that I've been playing with for a while, has an external GPS and compass unit and sat on this board. It's allowing me to change things and get it all working. And I'm very pleased to say that I have got this all working. And over the last two or three weeks playing with this and finding 99 ways to not get it all working, I think I've stumbled on the way that it does. Now, if you go and have a look at that Recon 7 iNav setup series, there is actually uh, something in the description that talks about the alignment that you need for the compass. But in this one, let me go through this and show you exactly how to do it or how I've got this working here, because this isn't as clear as it could be. So I've got this rig that I've just showed you plugged into the computer. So I click on connect and there it is. So again, as we kind of lift it up and down, you can see that there's a little bit of variance in the heading, but that's because I'm not tilting it perfectly. Now to do that, I've actually had to go into the CLI and change a load of things. But before we go into that, let me very quickly remind you of how you would set up a compass normally in iNav. The way you normally do it is go into the configuration tab and then you select one of these six settings. There's the default, which I think is equal to CW270 flip, not sure, but you can try each of these in turn until you get the mag working. And when you look at the setup screen, it's actually pointing in the right direction. And as you tilt it, the degrees doesn't change that much. It kind of stays pointing in the right direction. So that's how you would normally do it. However, what is happening behind the scenes is iNav is taking the roll, pitch and your values for whichever of these presets that you set up. And in iNav is actually setting these offsets so that the chip is working. Now, the reason that we need these offsets is because the chip, the magnetic, the compass or the magnetometer is usually mounted on the underside of the GPS unit like it is here. And it's also mounted at some weird orientation. So the reason that we have to do this in iNav is to let iNav know the orientation and the position of the compass as part of the GPS to kind of take account of all those weird things like the fact it's upside down and tilted 270 degrees. So we can see that in the CLI. If I go into the CLI and type get align underscore mag and hit enter, there are all of the settings that they could be. Now my compass, external compass by default, is set to this one here, align underscore mag equals CW270 flip. And that is what mine has to be. I think that's quite a common one for lots of external uh, GPS and compass modules. And normally, if you look on your iNav installation, you'll find that Align Mag Roll, Align Mag Pitch, and Align Mag Yaw are all set to zero. And when they're all set to zero, then iNav just uses those Roll, Pitch, and Yaw values that we can see in this chart to kind of set up how the compass is mounted and orientated externally in relation to the flight controller. However, using these three values, we can custom set exactly how we want the compass to be seen by iNav.
Now, in my particular instance, if I look at how I have mine set, which was CW270 flip, that in the chart equals an aligned mag pitch of 180 degrees and an aligned mag yaw of two, uh, 270 degrees. Now, the slightly confusing thing is, is when you go into the CLI, you actually have to multiply it by 10 because these are in tenths of a degree and it does need to be pretty accurate. So in here, uh, ignore mag roll for a minute, uh, where I set a line mag pitch equals 180 degrees, a line mag yaw equals 270 degrees, and by manually setting that, it's basically told INAV what it had before when it was set to T CW270 flip. So what's the point of this? Well, the point is now that we've got that set, I can actually start adding the degree offset that we've got, that that GPS compass unit is, uh, is angled at, to one of these values to find the way that it works. Now, the thing that really confused me about this is that I assumed, assume, I always have to be careful with that, is that I would have to take the 20 degrees offset for this particular compass, and I would always measure the offset of the external GPS compass device. I recommend using something like this, like a protractor. Some of you may remember these from school doing maths, trigonometry, and technical drawing. You need something like this to measure the angle precisely. In this case, the angle on this test board is 20 degrees. So what I first of all did, well, I thought, well, this is in the pitch axis. So what I need to do is I just need to add the 20 degrees onto here. So if I did something like set a line, underscore mag underscore pitch equals 2000, which is the 1800 plus the extra 200 for the 20 degrees, then that's gonna work. Tried it, no dice, even recalibrated the external compass again, no dice. So I thought, okay, well in that case, I'll try set a line mag, and this time I'll take the 20 degrees off. So rather than being 180 degrees, it's 160, which would be 160 with an extra zero at the end. That will work. And then I tried that, and you know what? That didn't work either. The, and the big trick with this is when you are lifting and raising the or tilting the model, the orientation, the heading, should stay within four or five degrees maximum. Uh, if you find it swinging around, or if you kind of rotate the board quickly, and then once you take your hand off it, it then slides around a little bit more, those are great indications that the compass alignment isn't wrong. So I couldn't get this done, and this is what I've been playing with for two weeks trying to figure it out. And then I set a line mag back to the 180 degrees that it was set at before, and I thought, well, if it's not in the pitch, that's not fixing this for me. Let me try and add the 20 degrees into the roll axis. Now, bear in mind that the compass orientation is all out of whack because we're having to use these other values of 180 degrees and 270 degrees uh, to make it line up. Maybe the roll axis is the one that I need to take care of because it's actually being read as pitch. Now we've had these kind of things before in INAV for board alignment when the board wasn't flat. Now they've been fixed in recent versions, but maybe this is like that. So I put the 200 or 20 degrees into the align mag roll, initially tried it as positive uh, 200, didn't work, and then tried as negative 200 and bingo. That was the secret source. And when I did that, even with the compass at that 20 degree angle, it was all being read. I didn't have to recalibrate, I didn't have to do anything, it just all started working. So as I move it around, it kind of just stays and locks in position on the desk. So that's the trick. You don't have to get too involved in this. The big thing is, is that you go into align mag and you, you set the initial roll, pitch and your numbers to match this chart. Once you have that set, then measure the angle that the uh, compass is at, which is probably going to be between 15 and 30 degrees, and then either add or take them away from each of the values until you find the one where the compass just starts to work great.
Hopefully this will get a little bit easier in future, but I definitely felt that this was a subject that needed its own video because I've had lots of people try and follow in my footsteps with some of the iNav setups. And if you have a model that has that kind of compass GPS unit at the back that isn't flat, then unfortunately you'll never get the compass to uh, set up and calibrate cleanly and then work great unless you use this weird way of using these individual uh, lines in the CLI to tell iNav how the compass is aligned. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.